Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Albums Ranked. So, we've been sort of moving through a lot of my favorite bands, and um, I, I was taking it easy for a little bit and working with bands that had smaller discographies, but it has to happen sooner or later. We got to get into the ones that have a lot more shit. And today, we are going to be talking about one of my favorite bands and in my opinion, one of the most important bands in thrash metal, especially in the crossover thrash subgenre, we're going to be talking about suicidal tendencies. And I'm fucking ready. I'm ready. I got all my shit out. And most importantly, and it's the choice of a new generation. All right, so yeah, Suicidal Tendencies have a shit load of releases. So I don't want to keep you guys here all day. So I'm going to stick to the full-length albums, not doing any EPs or compilations. In fact, just to get them out of the way, uh, because they are considered part of their discography when it comes to albums, I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, cover albums out of the way. Those are the albums where they actually just redid their own songs. Um, so, uh, number 14, I would have No Mercy Fool slash The Suicidal Family. That came out in 2010. It's a bunch of songs off of, like, uh, 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 Join the Army and shit, and it's, they're not very good recreations of the songs, in my opinion, at all. And then number 13, Still Psycho After All These Years from 1993. That one, I realized that they made it because they, they had some sort of contractual dispute with who uh whoever put out their first album but it's not anywhere near as good as the original album uh and then number 12 i'll put still psycho punk after all these years which came out in 2018 and honestly i really enjoy this album but it is a re-recording of of a, of a mike muir solo album that he did you know early in the 2000s and then number 11 i'm gonna include controlled by hatred slash uh 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 uh, feel like shit deja vu um which came out in 1989 i'm including that it does have some original things on it but it's mostly re-recordings of stuff from the no mercy album and uh yeah it's not really a full-length original suicidal album so that's my ranking of those got those out of the way let's get to the real shit all right coming in at number 10 of the original full-length suicidal albums is the 2000 album Free Your Soul and Save My Mind. This is, um, <clears throat> it's not a great album. It's it's fun. There's a good energy on it. Um, they still got Mike Clark in the band at this point. Uh, but overall, it just feels a little bit uninspired. Um, uh, there's not a whole lot that sticks out, you know. And then there's uh, that song, Pop Songs, which is kind of awful. Uh, but, um that's just because I, I don't know. I don't know why it, 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 it kind of makes me cringe when anyone writes a song talking about how popular music is bad. I mean, duh, but I mean, I don't know. It's just not great. And, uh, and, and honestly, it's not a very good evolution from the album they made previously, aside from the fact that maybe they added a little more funky shit to it. Um, but yeah, overall, it's one of those albums that, um, I don't go back to a whole lot. Um, it's more of a, if the songs come up on shuffle, you know, I, I might enjoy a song here or there, but overall, not an incredible album. All right, so we'll just go straight to the one that came right before this one, the 1999 album, Free Dumb. And this album was very straightforward punk. It is a very focused um, and energetic, and, and, and just like, you know, the previous album, it's a good time. It's a good time album. Um, and I think the sort of urgent straightforwardness of it all and the fact that the songs are all kind of short, well, most of them are, um, it's one of those albums where if you're not really paying attention, you can kind of become confused if a new song has started or if this is the song you were already listening to. So um, it's a little bit forgettable in the canon of suicidal tendencies just because it's it's so just like boom we're out the gate and here are these songs all right see you guys later and uh but anyway it's a very straightforward punk album and it's and it's a, more enjoyable than for your soul save my mind i'll give you that but um you know it's number nine all right so number eight 
is the 2013 album called 13, which when it came out was their first album of new material in 13 years. And uh, this album's kind of a return to form for them at the time. Uh, the lineup on this album is really great. You got Dean Pleasance on guitar uh, at this point and uh, drummer Eric Moore. That dude shines all over the fucking place on this album. And um, it's got a lot of that sort of experimental vibe on some of the songs that is reminiscent of uh, Art of Rebellion, which we'll get to later. But songs like God Only Knows Who I Am, like it's got like a vibe where they're just sort of feeling how things are moving and making these songs just become whatever they become. And um, it's a really great album. And honestly, when it comes to a Suicidal Tendencies album, 13 has way more of what I want. Um, there's way more of a variety. It's good performances. Um, it was an exciting return of the band when it when it came out. Number seven, the 2016 album World Gone Mad. This is their last or most recent original full-length album. And before I say anything else, I'm just going to say Dave Lombardo. So, yeah, this is the uh, first album that has Dave Lombardo on drums. And, of course, he sounds fucking great and he brings an incredible energy to the band. This album is not a huge step uh, from 13, but it feels a little more refined and uh, kind of has a classic quality to it. Like, I don't know, like the the maybe it's the production and maybe it's the songwriting that they chose, but um, it really does kind of fit in with the more classic Suicidal Tendencies albums, in my opinion. Um, anyway, it's a great album, so that's why it is at number seven. Number six is the 1994 album Suicidal for Life. This one, aside from having the weirdest cover of all their albums, um, it's uh, one that I hear some shit talking about here and there. People don't seem to dig it that much, but I think it's really great. It's got a fucking raw, urgent energy that, I don't know, it feels like it's a visceral reaction to what was going on in music at the time. Um, as opposed to just writing a song about how you don't like popular music, they just made an album where it just seemed like they had a lot of rage to get out. Like the riffs are heavy. Um, this is the last album with Rocky George on guitar. And uh, it just sounds fucking great. It's a fun, energetic album. Um, what else do I have to say about it? They still got Rob Trujillo on bass on this. So the lineup's pretty fucking tight and the songs even though they're simple, um, they're heavy as fuck. The album should have just been called Fuck because there's so much cursing on this fucking record. I think if you look down the track titles, the word fuck is in like every other song title. But anyway, it's a really cool, enjoyable album. I, maybe it's more of a hindsight thing uh, because uh, as time has moved on, this album has really grown on me. Number five is the 1987 album, Join the Army. So, this is a classic record. Um, they're starting to to mess around with the crossover thrash thing on this album. Um, it's the first album with Rocky George on guitar. Um, it's also uh, the entrance of uh, R.J. Herrera on drums. So we're starting to see what I consider the classic lineup of uh, Suicidal come together. And um, it's a fun, cool, classic Suicidal album. The only gripe I have, which is probably the same gripe that a lot of people have, is that uh, Mike Muir's voice sounds oddly strained all the way through. Um, obviously it was a choice, you know, vocally of what he wanted to do. Um, and I guess maybe he was trying to distance himself from how he sounded on the uh, self-titled debut album. But either way, it doesn't really take away a lot from the album. It's got classic fucking songs like War Inside My Head. You know, they still play that shit today. And um, yeah, it's just a great fucking solid album of mid eighties suicidal. Number four is the 1992 album, The Art of Rebellion. Now, this album is uh, very cool to me because I'm sure you've heard me say before, I like it when bands try something new and stretch out the boundaries of the kind of music they're making. And this is the most experimental Suicidal Tendencies album. Um, there's a little bit of psychedelic shit going on in it. There's you know, some good pop melodies in it. Um, it's got a kind of melancholic mood to some of the songs, uh, which is really interesting. Um, it's very introspective. You can tell that in the songwriting and especially in Mike Muir's performance that 
um, there was a lot of internal struggling going on at the time. And uh, it comes through in the music, but it's a thoroughly enjoyable album. There's such a good variety of songs. Um, you've got uh, uh, Josh Freese on drums at this point, which um, he wasn't like a full member of the band, but he's a badass drummer. So it just brings on another, another dynamic of awesomeness to this fucking record. Um, but yeah, you've got songs like I Wasn't Meant to Feel This, Slash Asleep at the Wheel, which is, it's like a psychedelic suicidal tendency song. And I fucking love it. But uh, yeah, overall, it's a very enjoyable album and it's the most diverse of anyone they put out. Uh, so that's why it falls here at number four. All right, number three is the 1990 album Lights, Camera, Revolution. So first off, this album has my favorite Suicidal tendency song, which is You Can't Bring Me Down. Um, I'm sure a lot of you out there love that song too. It's like an anthem. It's it's It never gets old to me. Uh, but also this album is uh, the only album that has what I consider the quintessential classic Suicidal Tendencies lineup. Uh, you, you get uh, Rob Trujillo in, and then you have the rest of the guys, you know, Mike Clark and so on, that were on How Will I Laugh Tomorrow. And uh, this album is not a huge step forward from How Will I Laugh Tomorrow, but it's kind of a more polished and, I don't know, a little more succinct, you know, I use words sometimes where I'm like, does that mean what I want it to mean? Anyway, but yeah, it's like a more refined version of that. But with that album and this album, I, I would consider this one of the two quintessential Suicidal Tendencies albums if somebody came to me and said, hey, who is Suicidal Tendencies? This is one of the albums I would play for them. All right, number two is the 1983 self-titled debut album, Suicidal Tendencies. And uh, I did a whole video on this months back, but I fucking love this album. It is the best example of just sort of raw, young energy and aggression. Um, and it's the kind of thing that can never be recreated because these guys were young, they had something to say, they hadn't yet gotten to that point where they were overthinking everything. It's like lightning in a bottle in an album. And it's just so much fucking fun to listen to. And um, it, I mean, it's a fucking classic. You got Institutionalized on there. Uh, you got I Saw Your Mommy. I mean, it's, come on. But um, it's the only album with that particular lineup, aside from Mike Muir, um, and it's just, I don't know. It's one of those albums that I feel should be in the fucking Library of Congress as being an important album that was made. Because, uh, yeah, I, I can go on for hours about this, but just go check out the video that I did on it. All right, number one, How Will I Laugh Tomorrow When I Can't Even Smile Today, 1988. This album, like I said, with, uh, with Lights, Camera, Revolution, it's one of the quintessential... Suicidal Tendencies albums. This is them fully getting into their crossover thrash. It's the uh, first album with Mike Clark, who was previously in the band No Mercy with Mike Muir. And Mike Clark with Rocky George, it, I don't know. It, if something happened on this album where they just fully realized their sound and it's such an enjoyable album. I mean, you got fucking Trip at the Brain, uh, the title track, How Will I Laugh Tomorrow When I Can't Even Smile Today. And um, it's just a fucking amazing example of what was going on in music at the time. And I believe that Suicidal did it better than anybody else at that point. And it's, it's just one of those fucking albums that you get into this album and and before you know it, you you, you just have to pledge your allegiance. You, 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 all, you all know what I'm saying. So there you have it. My worst to best for Suicidal Tendencies, one of my favorite bands of all time. Uh, please feel free to uh, put your worst to best for Suicidal in the comments below, or just let me know what your favorite Suicidal album is. And uh, yeah, at this point, listing off my favorite bands and doing their albums, we're getting into a territory where there's going to be a shitload of albums for certain artists. And so I don't know where I'm going to go from here, but we'll see because uh, this is fucking fun. And thank you all for joining me and watching me and commenting and make sure you subscribe if you're not already subscribed and tell your friends and all that shit. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I will see you guys again next time.